Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are going to be looking at the Play Art Kai DC Variant Armored Batman figure. This guy is one heavy action figure. He feels as heavy as he looks. He's a really, really massive figure. He stands uh, 11 and a quarter inches tall to the top of his ears, and he is bulky. Really, really bulky. But they did a good job with it because for the most part, the articulation is not particularly limited. Before we get into that though, let's talk about what he comes with. He does come with the standard Square Enix Play Arts Kai display stage that is on the back of the inside card of the, or it's on the inside card of the packaging, so I haven't removed that, but they do come with all, they all come with those now, so you guys should be familiar. And he has a uh, variety of interchangeable hands comes with the two fist hands in the package that are already on him and then he has two relaxed hands or style pose hands so those are pretty cool and then he has a trigger finger hand for using his grapnel gun and then he has a gripping hand for holding his other accessories uh, what I will do right now is to show you the detail in the hands. They did a really good job of sculpting this armor and painting the hands. They look awesome. Everything on this figure looks really awesome, but you can see the little armor plating just even on the insides of the fingertips and on the palm there. Very well detailed. He comes with this thing, which I guess is supposed to be maybe a dagger or a taser or something like that. Not entirely sure, but he does have that. He comes with a little batarang, which is nice. It's a little bit small, I think. Uh, once you put it in his hand, it just kind of looks a little insignificant compared to how big and beefy he is. It's a little bit small, but it's not bad. I mean, it's fine. It's just a little tiny, but it matches the ones for the most part that are on his thigh, so that's kind of cool. And then he also comes with a little grenade, which matches the ones on his thigh. Uh, I guess it's a grenade. It looks like a grenade. Maybe it's a smoke bomb or something like that. Again, it's a little small looking. It looks a little bit small. And then his last accessories are his, whatever these are, grapnel guns. And I'll show you what this black piece is in a second. So this is the way this one comes in the package. It looks like pretty much just a grapnel gun, something like that. And then it comes with this piece, which I at first I was like, uh, I'm not sure what that is. But, you can take the handle off and put it on here, so that that looks like a grapnel gun also. But you wouldn't use that because it has that weird front thing. This is meant to go on here. I think it goes that way. It might go the other way. Oh, yeah, it goes this way. I'm sorry. Uh, and that's a humongous gun. It looks like a shotgun, which maybe that's what they were going for. I don't know. It's a little bit awkward since Batman doesn't really typically have guns, so it definitely isn't a grapnel gun, because it looks like a two-hander for sure. It's really long. So I don't know, that's a little strange. I would probably just recommend using it as the short version and ignoring that other piece, using it like that. Or at, at worst case scenario, is using it this way because it has these cool pieces. And this doesn't necessarily look like it doesn't belong. So I don't know uh, why it has that extension. But it's not bad, it's just something I'm not so sure about. And then this piece is just a way for them to go on his belt, sort of. You saw them snapped onto here. This isn't even technically supposed to come off, it just can. This pegs into his back. There's a little spot back here on his back that this pegs into. And then he can hold his uh, accessories on his belt, so to speak. And they look kind of cool like that. But it's also kind of bulky, so I'm just going to leave that off for now. So as far as accessories go, he's got a decent batch, especially for being as bulky as he is. I wasn't quite expecting so much. Uh, but let's talk about the figure, the paint scheme. I can imagine some people are going to complain that there is purple on him. I am not one of those people. I was a little hesitant at first. I thought maybe a blue would look better, and it might, but that's kind of just a personal preference. The purple, though, it looks good. It suits Batman because he would be at night and purple would bl help him to blend in at night. So that's fine. And it just looks good. It matches the yellow nicely, the gold, and it goes well with the silvers and grays and everything. So I, for one, am not having a problem with the purple. Some people might. I don't. I think it looks good. Looks cool. No complaints. 
And then we have a lot of this kind of gunmetal silver going on for the main parts of the armor. They did a really good job of making that look like actual metal. No cat, don't you come over here. You go away. I have to stop the cat. Okay, so we were talking about the metal parts. They all look awesome. There's a dark gunmetal color with a little bit of silver dry brushing throughout. Lots of little pits and pock marks and nicks and scratches. Looks really cool. All these little rivets have gold on them. Then we have the lighter silver for the blades and the more gold on there. Just really nice overall composition. Uh, we have lots of the silver and purple. We have the silver undersuit which looks kind of like a carbon fiber weave type of thing. Very nice looking. A little bit of the bluish purplish plate work throughout. Just generally a really cool looking concept of figure. And then we have the feet which have these ankle guards on the back and lots of plate work on the top. We'll talk about that more when we get to the articulation. One last thing to mention before we get to that is this thing, which can, at least on mine, can be removed. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be. This is just kind of like a sheath for his little dagger thingy, which takes a little bit of force to push in, and you have to line it up quite, just, just quite right. I don't know, whatever, just right. And then it's there, but it, it is a little bit bulky, so you may want to move that out of the way, or you can get it to come off, probably, if yours is anything like mine. All right, so for the articulation, let's talk about the head, which, by the way, I absolutely love this head sculpt. It's very classic Batman while also being very new and cool looking. Uh, and the paintwork is really good on the face. I love it. The eyes are silver. I don't know if they're showing up great on camera. They might look kind of like they just blend in, but in person they look good. Uh, so for the head, we have the standard double ball peg for the head itself. You'll pose that around however you need to. We have this soft neck piece which has the ball hinge on there. I'm not sure it actually needs a whole ball hinge. Just to, If it was connected and just soft, it would have been fine because it doesn't really need to move around too much. So that's cool. And then the neck has a double ball peg also, but it's really stiff. So even if you pop the head off, you will have a little trouble moving this around, but you can do it if you need to. And that'll just help for posing. Uh, we'll go ahead and pop the head back on. I guess we don't need to leave that off for any reason right now. If I can do it on camera. All right. So the head, you won't have any trouble posing the head at all. The shoulders, it looks like you would, but you really don't. This piece here is soft and it doesn't get in the way at all. And this shoulder piece is actually connected to the shoulder. It's a little bit flexible, but you don't have to really worry about it too much. You can still move the shoulder pretty much however you want to, and it's gonna work. We do have the new design for the shoulders, which is just the big ball hinge, which gives us our butterfly and our rotation. Um, he doesn't really have that much of a butterfly range of motion. It's pretty much just a standard shoulder, but it's probably okay since he's so bulky anyway. So that ball hinge gives us all the posability we need. We get our bicep swivel out of that if you want, but you also have one down here at the bicep. So you really shouldn't have too much trouble posing him. Standard elbow hinge. A little bit better than 90 degrees, but not by much. And it does look good on the back side. It has that cu uh, cup for the elbow that hides the joint nicely. Uh, they used a gray joint in there. I wish they used a lighter gray so that would blend in a little bit better, but it doesn't stand out, so that's okay. For the wrist, it's a standard wrist hinge, so you'll be able to move the hand around all you want. Unfortunately, this piece here is connected to the forearm. It would have been nice if it was free spinning so that you could move it around with the hand so that it always looked like that. Unfortunately, you can't, so you're going to have to move the hand and have that there. That's really one of my biggest gripes, is that that probably should have been a spinny piece that just pegged on with the hand, and you could just spin it around. That would have been great. The upper torso articulation, it does lean forward and back, but the cape being so heavy pulls it back mostly. You do get your swivel and a little bit of leaning side to side, but not a whole lot. Let's talk about the cape before we move down any lower. We have this top piece that covers up the joints, and this is on just a little ball hinge itself, so this will move around if you need it to. It's a little bit awkward looking, but it's fine. Once you get imposed, it's not a big deal at all. And it still has those nice little rivets and sculpt work on there. And then the cape connects pretty much the same way you would expect it to, other than having those pockets for the pegs to go onto. 
Uh, these pieces here, we don't normally see those, and those are there just to pull the cape away from the body a little bit to give him room for those accessories that go back there. Uh, but they work just the same. We're on the same standard ball hinges. The cape is a little bit heavy, so it will hold, but if you move him too much, it falls down. Or if you let go quickly, it'll fall down. You kind of have to gently set it in place. I don't know how often you're going to actually have it posed up, but you can do that and you can move it around since it's two pieces. It comes pretty much like that in the package, but you can bring it out fairly wide and they did a decent job of letting it overlap like this, having this piece here. And then you do get a pretty decent wide cape if you want to, or you can just collapse it on itself and you get a pretty narrow cape. So it's not bad. It is really heavy, but he's also really heavy. I haven't had any troubles balancing him, so it's not horrible. And He's not going to be in the most dynamic of poses anyway. For the lower torso, it was really stiff when I got it, but it does work. It has a decent range of motion, full swivel, side to side, front to back. He's got, I'd say, a rather decent range of motion for most of his articulation for being as bulky as he is. The floating crotch piece does not look overly bulky, and he doesn't have a really narrow waist and then big hips. I think it all suits him very well. Um, I'm pretty happy with it nicely made, very well done, no big gaps or anything. Uh, we can bring the legs all the way up, all the way down. These are soft so they won't break off if you press them against anything, so you're okay with that. You can bring the legs all the way out to the side. We do have the thigh swivel, double jointed knees. The knee armor is a little awkward looking, but once you get imposed it looks fine, no big deal. If you really wanted to, you could leave it like that and just bring the leg down there or just bring the leg down from that joint. So it's really up to you. I think it's not bad at all. Uh, we still are having a little bit of an issue with the knee joints and the Play Arts Kai figures, uh, but every basically every one they put out is a little bit better than the last, so I'm hopeful. And they're, just, they're certainly not bad, so I'm okay with it. And then for the ankle, we have a standard ankle hinge. It's kind of hard to see just because we have this soft piece also in here but it's a standard ball hinge for the ankle, so that gives us our ratcheting. And then we have a swivel in here, which you guys know I don't care for, uh, but you can just kind of ignore that and you wiggle around the hinge and give yourself an ankle rocker that's proper. And the foot does go pretty far, uh, I, no, I'm sorry, it doesn't go pretty far forward, I said the wrong thing. It goes pretty far back, but not too far forward, unfortunately, and there's no toe hinge. So it could be better for the feet, but since he's so big and heavy, you're probably going to want to have him standing flat-footed anyway, so a toe hinge isn't entirely necessary. You shouldn't have any trouble posing him, really. For being as bulky as he is, it's really well done, and I'm super happy with it. Uh, stick around here at the end for some posing options so you can see him in action. Really a very, very impressive figure. If you like Batman figures, then this is one that you need to get. Uh, even if you don't like the whole anime thing, uh, this guy is just a super cool Batman. Maybe the coolest Batman, more of a traditional Batman that I've than I've ever seen. Very well done. Uh, maybe the only one that might be cooler is that black and red one that we're going to be getting very soon. So uh, there it is, guys. I'd highly recommend it. Very very cool. Uh, I think you should go get one. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.